The Clash. A deluded fantasist to the end, scheming Sturgeon used her hastily arranged resignation press conference to defend her pathetic record as Scotland's First Minister. I'm very proud of what has been achieved in the years I've been in Butte House. Of course, for balance, there will be others who will, uh, how should I put this, cope with the news just fine. Scotland is fairer today than it was in 2014. There is so much that I am proud of. But what do you think? Was Nicola Sturgeon a success or failure as Scottish First Minister? Dan at GBNews.uk. Big poll running on this right now at GB News on Twitter. The results shortly. But to help you make up your mind, I'm joined by the founder of the majority and anti-nationalist campaigner Mark Devlin, the Hi. political writer and pundit James Melville, and the former SNP councillor Austin Sheridan. Now look, Austin, I've been very tough on Sturgeon tonight, so I want to give you ample opportunity to put her case. However, Austin, how can you claim she's been a success when she hasn't actually taken Scotland any closer towards separation? Nicola Sturgeon has been a success, not just in terms of advancing the, the cause of Scottish independence, but in terms of, of the way that she's governed Scotland and the support that she's received from the people. Uh, I, mean, I mean, for example, um, when it comes to following the case for independence and um, winning the election, she's been able to make the case, um, you know, as a substantial part of it. But, I mean, fundamentally, Nicola Sturgeon will still be there. Um, she's not going to be standing back from politics. She's simply stepping down as First Minister. Um, and as we move forward um, in our campaign for independence, um, Nicola Sturgeon, I am sure, will be an instrumental part of that, and she is going to remain a massive asset to the Austin, SNP. Austin, Austin, absolutely fair enough. Government. All of that, absolutely fair enough. But but you haven't answered how she's been a success, which is what we're debating. And and she didn't actually claim any successes in her resignation today. Yeah, I mean, I mean, Nicola Sturgeon, I would say, you know, has been fairly modest today. I think that what she was doing today was explaining, mm -hmm. the, you know, the, 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 the human reason about why she was standing down. And it's the simple fact that, that, that she's had enough in terms of the, the, the pressure that that kind of job puts on no, you. No, 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 Austin, 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 I'm not being rude. I, I promise you I'm not being rude. I'm not being rude. I just want to answer the question. What are her successes? Because that's what we're debating. We're not debating why she's resigned now. We're not debating what she's going to do. We're well, debating whether she's been a success. After, what are her successes? If we're measuring bringing independence closer to Scotland a success, she has absolutely done that uh, because the Yes campaign are up for the debate and the unionist side aren't up for the debate. I mean, people like Alan Foster, right, who are passionate about the union for the Northern Ireland side, I mean, at least she has the gumption to say, listen, I'm willing to defend the union, I'm willing to, to stand up and be passionate. Right. Scottish unionists just don't have the gumption to do it. They're pathetic. Okay. Well, it sounds like you were avoiding the question to me, but look, thank you. Mark Devlin, uh, do you think she's been a success or a failure? No, she's been an epic failure. She has failed uh, politically. Her political agenda is in the bin. And her um, and she's failed personally as well. Let's go talk about the political failure. She tried to, uh, to go to the Supreme Court. It was a disaster. Shot down in flames, killed independence movement, pretty much stone dead. Then she tried to go for this de facto referendum scheme. Scam, it's a complete nonsense and everyone knows it's nonsense as well you cannot use a general election as a referendum and then she went on with this gender nonsense and she'd been brought down you know if you could excuse me for being blunt but she was brought down by Isla Bryson's penis that's what that, that's what's happened so that's the that's the political agenda she's come to the end of the road on that and there's a personal uh, issue then she's been doing this since she was 16 Right? And she was supposed to be the person that took Scotland into the sunlit uplands of independence. And where is she now? She's resigning and just as a failure. Failed. Completely yeah. failed. No, I, I agree. But James Melvin, I've been fascinated to hear your opinion on this today because uh, you were a big independence guy. You were a big Sturgeon man. But of course, over the COVID pandemic, uh, where we got to know each other, you were mortified by the way Sturgeon became a, some sort of mini authoritarian. So, so when you look at her achievements on the whole, do you think she's been a success or a failure? 
And my relationship with Nicola Sturgeon in terms of judging her is tricky. It's complicated. I mean, I, you know, I was a, I was a supporter of Nicola Sturgeon, but I haven't been a fan of some of the measures and policies she put through in the last three years. You touched on her authoritarian approach to COVID, where it looked like she was trying to go one step beyond the UK government the whole time. And I didn't particularly like, for instance, other bits of legislation, for instance, the Hate Speech Act, and also in terms of gender identity as well, which has caused massive division in Scotland and caused a massive issue with human rights aspects with women's rights in Scotland as well. The one success I would give her, if you're looking at Nicola Sturgeon in the round and for a sense of balance, is that she's an election winner. She's done it time and time again. She's made the SNP an election winning machine. So I'll give her that. But it's not just also about, you know, elections and policies and legislation. It's also about some of the standards that are happening in Scotland and our infrastructures in terms of what's happening with the health service, what's happening with education, what's happening with crime. And so I'm a believer in independence, but I think what we've got is now Nicola Sturgeon, her legacy will be almost a juxtaposition where she wants freedom for Scotland, but she was taking away, paradoxically, freedom from Scottish people with some of her legislation. Oh, my goodness, she was. I mean, Mark Davidson, how do you respond to James on, on that point? Well, because I, mean, I guess he's is... right about her popularity, right? You and I can say that she had no pro realistic proposals for separation and her separatist cause would destroy Scotland. But actually, Scots voted for it on the whole. At yeah, and this is the thing, I think, that, you know, it kind of annoys me about people like James. They're the kind of people who say, you know, those people who say, you know, real communism's never been tried yet. They, James is one of these guys who's, like, saying, well, real nationalism's never been tried yet, but we've had 14 years of this nationalism with, with, and, uh, with uh, Alex Salmond, first of all, Nicola Sturgeon. And, you know, when you support authoritarian, uh, uh, incompetent uh, nationalism, nationalists so that you can get to your goal of uh, independence, then is it really a surprise when those same incompetent nationalists, authoritarian nationalists, is it really a surprise when they come out with authoritarian James, laws? do you want to respond to that? I do. I think basically for me, independence isn't about the Scottish government. Independence is a bigger picture thing. I've got no time for so many of the policies that the SNP have put through over the last three years. It's that just a romantic fantasy. That's Hold what on. it is. Hold on. That is not my vision of Scotland in the future. I think Nicola Sturgeon has failed Scotland in a lot of ways over the last three years. But my vision of independence is something that is a much different set of policies to what the SNP are doing right now. To actually put the SNP government and independence in the same bundle. It's exactly what, I, I just, it's exactly what I just birds. said. You've got a romantic idea of what nationalism is. And it doesn't matter if you put a smart suit on it and call it Nicola Sturgeon. It's still the same toxic, divisive nationalism that Austin, it always has been. Austin, how do you respond to that? No, Nicola Sturgeon's biggest success is what these people have been critics of. I mean, say, for example, if you look at how Nicola Sturgeon um, led Scotland through the pandemic, um, she came across as very genuine, Hopefully. came across as very caring, which then resulted in the 47% of the national vote, 1.2 million votes. And the 2021 Scottish election, which happened during the pandemic, that she got the largest share of the vote and largest number of votes any political party had ever received because she carried the people behind her. I mean, and, and then we look at the, the, the gender debate as well. You know, what I find really interesting about the two panellists here is that they're saying that the things that divide people in Scotland, the things that people put off Nicola Sturgeon, are actually what people vote the SNP for. So it's pretty clear, looking at election results, which, which, which is how we measure the support, um, of politicians, she's winning them. And that's okay, like all right, thank you so much. We've had a good debate. How incompetent does that make the unionists then? Okay. I mean, if good, unions are so competent, debate. why have not been elected to government? Good, good debate. Austin Sheridan, Sturgeon supporter, SMP Council. Thank you, Austin. We'll see you tomorrow. Uh, thank you to the founder of the majority, uh, a voice for Scotland's anti-nationalist majority, Mark Devlin. Thank and, you. of course, the social media sensation, James Malville. So who do you agree with? Was Nicola Sturgeon a success or failure as Scottish First Minister? Alan on Twitter says Sturgeon is a terrible politician, but the MSM's little darling. Her COVID figures were just as bad as Boris's, yet she came out of it smelling of roses. From David, how many failed prime ministers since Brexit has the UK had? Nicola was first minister for eight years. Very successful career on any 
scale. And from Kathleen via email, as a Scot, I am celebrating today. Nicola has left a very divided Scotland because of her obsession with independence. And your verdict is now in. It's overwhelming. Just 12% of you say that Nicola Sturgeon was a success as First Minister. 88% of you believe she failed.